Alright. I did some deep reflection. Right now I'm going through like a little spiritual moment. I usually go through these a lot of times, so I just don't say nothing about it. But no, right now I was just going through a reflection stage and I'm like yo I'm 38 and I always come from a standpoint of like me starting over or me like basically I don't be saying nothing you know what I'm saying? Like, I literally don't be saying nothing. What up, what up? I literally don't be saying nothing. But I always left it to, like, if you know, you know. If you don't, you don't know. Whatever. Certain people know certain things about me. Certain people don't know certain things about me. This after. There's only a few people know, like, a lot about me. But it's because of the um, different names that people called me, or I went by. A lot of times they don't make the connection. But all right, it's like in the nineties, right? I could. I'm take y'all through a couple vlogs and just like really tell my story like so in the 90s right that was a rare time I talk about it but I don't really go into detail talking about myself per se like what I did during the 90s right so, their 90s ish, yeah, 90s, because in 1990, George Bush became president. No, Bill Clinton became president. It's Bill Clinton versus George Bush. For then, it was um, Bush, right? And during that time, they was training me be a pastor alright like real talk she got that shoe on I like that hat she got that kango <laughs> but they'll train me to be a pastor and I had an interest in <laughs> I had an interest in science. <laughs> I had a big interest in science and math and things like that. But they used to have me go to different churches and stuff like that and prophesize and stuff like that. That's real. So, we got the big ass dog. <laughs> you, you good too. <laughs> uh, hey, no. That's a great day. Mix with pitch. Cream corso. Hey, let me. Yeah. Hey, huge. Saturday, huh? Downtown. I'm gonna miss you. I'll see you Monday, okay? I'll see you. Love you. Love you too. 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 Love you
after that, right, it was, like, my mom used to go to Powerhouse and stuff like that, different places like that. And I used to also have, like, performances and things of that nature. Because I was... Yeah, let's rewind it. At that time, I was, like, living in Fight Square Manor. Before that. What up, what up? And I was on daycare on Troop. And my grandmother owned houses on Troop. And Fight Square was right across the street. Like, mad at my cousins and family. From all different sides of my family lived in the Fight Square. My grandma lived across the street with my uncle because it's like a um, double that's like an apartment in the back all right now <laughs> and my house i had a house this you them huh what do you mean this me no i'm i got fish tonight man. <laughs> i had a house that was like right next door yeah, I had it, it was written out and stuff. Hey, what up, what up? Oh, I'm about to ask him, but hold on. Let's see what I gotta get. I got list. But I used to do performances and stuff like that. So, like, MC Hammer stuff, Michael Jackson, all that stuff, perform all the time, dance, sing, rap, lip sing, and stuff. All that different type of stuff. So I was always in like performance arts ever since I was little, right? And like, it's mad footage of me from all my years of like different tapes of me doing speeches and plays and dances and things like that and different sermons and Speaking at mosque and stuff like that, like it's crazy, right? So like all my life, I've been doing the same thing. Truthfully, be honest with you. So when turn like five, because this is kindergarten. Right. Well, no, she met him, my stepfather, and ah. that time too. Abba. When we lived in Fight Square, well, I'll be right back. I'm just saying it's because I'm letting y'all remember who I am, not necessarily reintroducing myself. But I'm letting certain people remember who I am and what I'm really capable of. And to the new people worldwide who don't know, you know, I'm just putting out there. But um, my stepfather was an email. During that time, is the time of me understanding like duality. You get what I'm saying? And learning certain principles of life. I actually know. I need one too. I just got a cigarette in my toe. Right right you know what? Yeah. Oh, here you go. I got one. I got one. I just so just like check. Yeah. Now I just switched up. I wear them things every day, all the time. So I was like, but they look so comfortable. They are. It's just like wearing slippers. Yes, that's what they look so comfortable.
Is it working? That fluid in it. Let me see. Hell, it ain't got no. Put that fluid in it. It ain't got no thing on the back of it. Oh, it's inside. Look, it's inside the thing. Look. The spring then jumped off of it. Look. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Let me see. Look at you. Thank you. Thank you, neighbor. You're welcome. All right. Have a good evening. You too. What the hell I do with the cigarettes, man? All right. But, yeah, like, if you understood my story, you understand? You'll understand, like, fully. And right, that's the thing. A lot of people don't understand fully. Boy, I've been working since I was born. Like, <laughs> like, like, let me break it down to y'all a little bit. Tell y'all some stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> at that time, rah! <laughs> 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 Alright now. Okay, let's move. Alright now. They downstairs. Nah, bro. But. But. When she married an Ema, right? So, like, imagine being going to different churches and stuff, and ministering and stuff like that, and then going to different masks and stuff like that, and speaking and things like that. So the same thing, ministering, right, from two different religions, right? But then you got this whole mystical background from when you eat little too. And you got a whole setup already. Like, different, uh, a prophecy, different parts of the prophecy being revealed before your eyes, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? You have deep conversations with things that's like unexplained or like stuff you don't really talk about and stuff. You know what I'm saying? I can't even call him. Uh, let me see. So, like, it's just an interesting story. But hold on. I mean, I keep getting interruptions, man. Because it's crazy, like, it's technically me, like, kind of, like, running down my resume. And I don't really do this a lot. Because when I do do it, to me, it seems like I'm... To me, it don't seem like that to me. But to me, it seems like a lot of people feel like I be bragging or something. Right? So during this time, like I was saying, my mom was married to an imam, like legally married, named Yusuf Sharif. Um, and my dad was a police officer for the Rochester PD. True story. Now, with Yusuf, that's what I learned about activism. Advocating for um, the community, 
doing rallies, marches, um, community events, fundraising, bookkeeping, learn how to actually build, run, and manage organizations and stuff like that. Um, stores and stuff like that, whatever, whatnot, you have, you get what I'm saying? Now, you gotta remember, this is from 5 to, like, from 5 to, like, 13. You know what I'm saying? Like, 13, 14. 13, 12-ish, I believe. It's so funny. It's hard to, like, pinpoint the age range sometimes because it's like two things happened at once or multiple things happened at once. So to actually, like, put a time frame on it, Sometimes, like, lock it down, pinpoint it for me. It's, like, kind of difficult. Because at that time, at those times, it's a, I had a lot of mentors. And, like, for me, I'm just be honest, like, in different realms and, Different spaces. That's what I also call different spaces. You get what I'm saying? Like, I've been to certain meetings that I can't really talk about. Um, I've been to different trades around that time. I was, uh, Martial arts champion, Taekwondo. And I went to two schools for, for Taekwondo at the same time. Okay? Just be honest. And I used to uh, have to study different books and things like that. Um, different military training books and encyclopedias and world knowledge and stuff like that. All um, cultural histories and stuff like that. Different languages. I never like master any different languages like that, but I got to a point where. A lot of times, I understand what they say. You get what I'm saying? Or what they talk about, the gist of it. But I feel like now is like one of them times I should think about actually involve myself in like mastering the languages. Because like, I was learning German, Arabic, Spanish, French, all at the same time. Like, it was so many people trying to pour into me and, and have me do stuff for them and what they was doing. You get what I'm saying? It's ridiculous. Just to think about it, like, so you got, like, different viewpoints all coming at you at the same time. Like spiritual viewpoints, religious viewpoints, political viewpoints, economic viewpoints, all coming at you at the same time, and you not just learning it, you like hands on with it. You feel what I'm saying? And for me, at that age, like culturally, it was the Italians was always around me. Irish was always around me. Um, Jamaican, 
Jamaicans, Haitians, all that stuff. Um, Geechees was around me all the time. Muslims, you get what I'm saying? Um, different organizations was always around me. Um, all that, like, yo, it's crazy. I'm thinking about it. Like, my resume is crazy. And that's, so, like, that's why I got, like, people that I know in high places, friends in high places, but I also end up developing enemies in high places, <laughs> all, all fronts, by association, guilty by association. And I always used to hear that, like, you gotta be careful, because you could be guilty by association and stuff like that. I always used to hear that. But it wasn't my fault. Like, <laughs> like, like I was raising this, so like, different gangs and stuff. Like, all this going on at the same time, right? So, like, I used to uh, always have to do hand-to-hand -hand sales of like incense, colognes, candy, through these different organizations. Yo, yo, it blew my mind, like fundraising. But I was always good at fundraising and having people buy stuff off me. Like whatever you had to sell, I could sell it. One of it was like the charm, the kid factor, stuff like that, but the psychological standpoint, like, one of my mentors later on in my life, that came along later on in my life, told me, like, in the game, you forget m more than the average person will ever learn. You forget more stuff than the average person will ever learn. And that's why you gotta have moments of reflection and stuff like that. Just remember what you know. And then sometimes you gotta brush up on it. And then sometimes you gotta go back and restudy it and relearn it. So you can stay sharp. So... The square was on lock, like, the troop was on lock. My stepfather used to work at A-plus, the gas station, and do security and stuff like that. And so I got a security background, too. That, that All the combat training and stuff like that, that's security background um then West Main at the time was our stump ground too like West Main troop so at that time we do a lot of stuff there and he was um renting out he didn't rent out, like, the storefront. Like, at first, he was renting out storefronts and stuff like that. They didn't end up get, getting buildings and stuff like that. And he always had this plan in the back of his mind. And I still don't understand the whole gist of it. Right? And it was the build... A magic jet or like some type of facility where people from all different cultures and different religions and stuff like that came to share and pass along information. But I'm getting too fast and ahead of the story, right? So. I feel like this story going to take a long, long time. I'm about to tell you about my life.
For real, for real. So. I'm trying not to jump too far ahead, so. So at this time, you own the build, you own a, the storefront. Yeah, storefront as Mass Jet on West Main Cross Street from McDonald's. And everybody know this is the time of Crazy Daddy back then. You feel what I'm saying? So McDonald's was right there on West Main. And he owned the spot, like a couple storefronts down from the Chinese restaurant. It used to be a Chinese restaurant right there on West Main. And that's where it, it was like in between the Chinese restaurant and the barbershop up in that area. Because it used to be a barbershop and nuts line over there too. So, I'll. Yo, this is crazy, yo. Like, try to put it in perspective. So, I'll be like, in one area. Learning, studying, to like minister and preach Baptist ideology, and then over here I'm learning to minister Islamic ideology, right? And then also going to martial arts classes. And also, learning about finances and stuff, and a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm not going to mention right now at this point. Just hold on, because we're going to just stick it to the, these two sides right here, right? And... I'm learning about real estate and property management, carpentry, painting, how to do construction and fix stuff and landscaping and stuff, right? But I'm also learning videography. Learning how to hold a presence in front of your camera. Learning how to perform. Also, like, in this area, and being up on stage and learning how to dance and sing and stuff. And so, as you can see, my day was very busy. It was structured, but it was busy also. You get what I'm saying? It's like everybody wanted me to do something that they wanted me to do. And first thing Rich Dad, Poor Dad taught me, which gave me an understanding was that don't work for money. Work to learn. And this whole time, as a youth, I was working to learn. I was working, but I was learning. And so I got a whole treasure chest of skills that I'm not even using all the way. You get what I'm saying? Like, I ain't even get started yet. And at the time, I had, like, I had relationships that was crazy. So, like, talking about, like, girlfriend relationships, I was, you know, as a youth with people that's right now 
if I were to say anything, it will be crazy. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm really not saying much. And... I have friends. Like, I got friends, bonds with people that's, like, crazy. Just thinking about it. Like, how everybody ended up turning out. You get what I'm saying? And I was thinking it was going to go one way and end up going another way. You feel what I'm saying? But the thing about it is I know them. And there's certain people who are actually doing exactly what they say they wanted to do. Then there's other people not really doing what they want to do. But he's still in a high spot. You get what I'm saying? But you can't take command. No, nah, let me stop. <laughs> let me stop. But the thing is that they all, everybody wanted me to do what they wanted me to do. But God... wanted me to do something else but I understood it always went together you get what I'm saying because it's more so about the relationship with the people and understanding the people and get, seeing different viewpoints and things like that even like the Dominicans and what you know what I'm saying and getting a splash of different cultures and stuff like that while I was still like, and people would never know. Like, they know me from what they know, but they don't know the other sides. You get what I'm saying? Because people are multifaceted. But some pe but I thought growing up, it took me to become an adult to understand what one of my mentors was saying. You got to understand, my godfather is a pastor. I got multiple, like, father figures in my life. You get what I'm saying? And, like, multiple grandfather figures and multiple uncle figures and stuff. Like, from different facets of life. So, and I got a lot of mentors. You get what I'm saying? Just to really, like, put it out there like you don't know who you messing with and that's like an understanding that I had to come across myself like you don't know who you messing with you don't know how far this go how deep it can go so you gotta sit back and actually like think about the history and figure things out and don't just jump out there acting crazy and wild and stuff like that because you never know who relationship you could be destroying or who relationship you could be birthing you get what I'm saying but during that time I met a lot of people and I came to understand that it was a lot of family around me also. Because, like, half my family was Muslim. Half my family was Christian. Some of my family members went from being Muslims to Christian. Some of my family members went from being Christian to Muslims through various parts of my life. And you get what I'm saying? And you had the ones who was just in the streets. That wasn't just in the streets. They was somebody in these streets. You get what I'm saying? So I'm surrounded by all these people who are somebody. And I'm not just surrounded by people who are somebody. I'm they baby. Hold on. Real quick. Like, they raised me. 
I was with him. I learned from him. I studied from him. We didn't even get... It. This is like... Before the politics. Like me actually being in politics. And learning politics. You get what I'm saying? And actually making moves in politics. I was an executive... At the age of 15, 16, bruh. Like, dead serious. Like, I was moving up the ranks, bruh. And people could, people never understood why. They never could understand why I always had the position I had. Or why people always treated me a certain way, things like that. That's because they never understood or asked, really. And I never said how much work I put out here in these streets, period, on all sides. On all sides. I see some of the greatest people in the world develop in front of my eyes. It's like the equivalent to having Martin Luther King next to you all the time. And you can ask him anything you want. Not saying that happened, per se. But, you can ask them anything you want. It's just to this point now, because you got to remember, well, you got to understand, being under that pressure all the time, too, so you, everybody protege, everybody trying to see which way you're going to go. Everybody trying to see what you're going to do. Not just on this level. But in different levels. It's wild. If you understand, you understand. If you understand, you understand. You in it, you in it, you know you know, you know what I'm talking about. Like, like if I was to tell you my circumstances now, what was really going on, you'd be like, what the f Dead serious. I just choose not to say nothing. Because they keep talking about pressure. I don't. I just mind my business. I'd be trying to like. Help the community. Or. Right, right now I was just in a stage of like. Let me just. Figure out what I want to do. Like I had a. I do. I had seeds planted. Since a baby of what I want to be and what I want to become and stuff like that. I had plans already written for me, man. I had all these different people try to write my story. What they didn't figure out was that I could see. They knew I could see, but they didn't know I could see how all this stuff be connected. And it, they don't understand how it be connected. A lot of people don't understand how it's all connected. So, at that time, 
I was on a public broadcasting channel, channel 15, right? Back in the day now, you know what I'm saying? It's 90s, right? On certain days, I'm on tapes that's being sold throughout community for everything. Performances, parties, music, all types of stuff. Back in the day, I used to make, um, like, demos. Later on, I started calling them reference records, references, reference tracks. Before I coined the phrase reference track, it was more so of, like, demos. They, they was calling them demos and stuff like that. I called them reference tracks. Because a reference track is different from demo. A reference track is you write a song, and instead of you happen to be there, right, they could take the tape, listen to it, tweak it, rewrite some stuff, things like that. I used to have, like, a little microphone and a little recorder, and I just sit there, and I just sit there all day and make up songs and stuff. Dead serious. Like, and then, next thing you know, the tape disappear or something like that. You feel what I'm saying? And it was, I remember somebody just had a random tape of me when I was younger. Like, when I was a teen, they just popped up with a random tape. Like, how you get this? So I got a lot of content already from back then. So like one of my things was like I got to figure out how to get hold of a lot of this content. You feel what I'm saying? And look at it and for nostalgia reasons. But not just that, to put it out there to y'all. Like dead serious. Like But record, I, I used to be a cameraman a lot of times, things like that. And I wore a lot of different hats, that's what I'm saying. I did a lot of stuff for a lot of people back then, man. So you got how you was raised. Different programming, the way you was programmed, right? I mean, like, programs, program, like, oh, we're going to run a program, we're going to start a program, stuff like, you get what I'm saying? Like, you got to understand the lingo and what we actually talking about, you feel what I'm saying? And then, my family history and heritage. And that's one of the reasons why I was able to, like, flow with it and just go with it and stuff like that is because of my family heritage. It's a mixed heritage off that. You feel what I'm saying? So it's a lot of different beliefs and ideologies and studies and practices in my family heritage that... I naturally have. Not I, I learned. No, I naturally had it. Like, I already knew it. Coming into life. I don't know why. You feel what I'm saying? I just knew what stuff was. Like, that's, I just knew what stuff was. Certain things. How to use certain things. Where certain things was located. Where so like, it just was, I just do it, like, it'd be times that I could go and preach or minister and talk about certain books and things like that, and 
know exactly what I was talking about, but don't know how I know what I was talking about. Like, without the studying, like, I'll study, but that's just like in class, in school, I'll know how to do certain stuff and just knew how to do it. But I've been, like, practicing all my life. And a lot of y'all haven't been practicing all y'all life. And all my lives. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, in this lifetime, I done died, came back a couple times, and everything else. Like, and the, the story is just fabulous. Like, it's just, it's, it's a deep story. Let alone all the stuff that goes on in the background. You get what I'm saying? That just, I'm telling you from like my viewpoint of stuff. I don't necessarily know everything that happened in the background and how I made this happen or this happened because I did this, that, you know, because what you do causes a chain reaction. You get what I'm saying? So if you raised up enough money to throw an event and then it end up saving somebody's life and then that person end up becoming somebody and then they take what you said and actually start studying it and stuff like that and they learn this, that, and third and they end up creating this. You don't know. You just a little boy. I was just a little kid. We talking about my adolescent years. You understand what I'm saying? My teacher in high school used to say, so much potential wasted. And I used to sit back and think like, boy, I'm tired of working. What is you talking about? I didn't did not. <laughs> but he don't know. But he was one of the greats. And he was my English teacher. This is what I'm trying to explain to y'all. Like, y'all don't understand, man. Mr. Muhammad. Like, yo. Like, yo, it's crazy, man. I had goats. I learned from goats. Like, dead serious, man. But. I'm going to stop it right here because it just got long. And I'm going to hit y'all back in a minute, all right? All right.